Hi friends! Today is going to be my ramp up for the month of August. In the month of August I read 10 books for a total of 3,507 pages, which is not too shabby, not my best, and also not my worst. As always, I will start with my DNFs, my unhauls, my lowest rated, and go up to our highest rated. And all of the books that I have a full review for on Goodreads will be linked down below. So let's get started with those DNF unhauls. The first of which is going to be It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. I actually did a video on this book, not this book in particular, but a grouping of books that were like the oldest books on my TBR um, that I did at the end of last month or the middle of last month because I didn't post anything for two weeks. We're not talking about that. Um, so if you want like my full thoughts on it, I will link you to that video. But essentially, I don't think this is a bad book. I think this book is good for some people, but this book contains triggers that do not work for me. This book could have used some content warnings and um, I am not emotionally stable enough for this book and its specific content. Um, this book deals with spousal abuse and I just <laughs> not about that life. One day maybe, but currently not happening. There are two other books that I decided to unhaul. These are not DNFs because I technically didn't start reading them, but also they're part of a series so maybe sort of kind of. Um, I have War Storm and Broken Throne by Victoria Aveyard. This is the last book in the Red Queen series and a bind up of novellas that is bigger than some books that I've read in my lifetime. Okay, so let's talk about these guys, shall we? Uh, I was talking with some friends a couple of weeks ago. Um, it may have been the Troublemakers. Someone asked me about the Red Queen series and essentially what I said was, you know, I really loved the first book. The second book I thought was pretty bad and the third book I skim read and I've got like the fourth at book and the bind up of novellas on my shelf but I just don't care how they end and kind of through that conversation was like why am I holding on to these? I'm never gonna read them. I, I just don't I don't care how things end. I have said in some of my reviews that so long as Killorn lived I would continue reading them and you know to this point there's no reason in that department for me to stop reading but I just don't care enough and I'm not gonna waste my time on books this ginormous if I'm not enjoying it. So these are gonna go I'll probably um, get rid of the whole series. This one's actually signed. Um, I'll probably donate these to maybe the local library since it's a full complete series and hardback. Maybe. I don't know. The next book that we're going to talk about is something that I don't think I have ever done on my channel um, and that's going to be Butter Honey Pig Bread by Francesca Iquayazzi. So I picked this book up as part of the boss battle for the Avengers Initiative reading challenge and also a video um, that will be coming out later this month about reading favorites from the Avengers Initiative reading challenge hosts favorites. Um, and this was a favorite of Christine's. And I chose not to rate this book. I read the whole thing. I read it all the way through. I chose not to rate it. And this is my explanation for why. I enjoyed what I read as far as like the over arc of the story. I think it it discusses a mother and her two daughters and this bad thing that happened to one of the daughters when they were younger and it encompasses their lives like from the mother's childhood to the daughters in their 30s so it's I mean it's a large span of time and the thing that didn't work for me is the way that the story is told as far as like jumping around um, time period wise and because of it can be both a symptom of adult ADHD it can also be a symptom of dyslexia both of which I question whether I have or not so I don't know like what cross section of the world I got this from but I struggle really hard keeping things in sequence especially 
Um, when things are told to me out of order, I have a hard time putting things into order. If it's like if you handed me a story that was out of order, I would have a hard time putting it into order. And so I struggled a lot trying to keep up with the story. Like when I was in that moment, um, like that particular chapter, I loved it. But as far as like the story as a whole, I, I struggled with it. And because I felt like that was a me problem and not an issue necessarily with the book, I didn't want to give it like a two and a half or a three star, which is what it probably would have gotten with my rating scale to bring down the rating of the book overall, because I do think it's a really good book. And I think it gives um, like a good look into the lives of women from Nigeria and how they grew up. Um, I love that it had actual recipes like intertwined into the book. One of the women is a cook. And so there was like actual recipes intertwined into that. Like I really enjoyed that aspect of it and a lot of different parts of it, but it just didn't fit for me and the way my brain works. So I didn't want to rate it and bring its rating down on Goodreads or wherever else I rated it at because of my inability to understand the plot. Typically this would be a book that I would have DNF'd, but I was enjoying the moments. Um, so I just decided not to rate it. Well, next we have Instant Karma by Marissa Meyer. I give this a three out of five stars. This book follows Prue and Quint. Prue is like total type A personality, is very punctual, has everything. It's like time down to the minute, is like puts everything together. And Quint is her lab partner in science class. And he is, according to Prue, you know, doesn't give a crap about anything and laid back and just is late for everything and doesn't have any responsibilities. And he's basically a loser. And she learns that he actually is this guy who uh, volunteers at a wildlife shelter um, for sea animals. And in order to get a better grade on a school project, she offers to volunteer at the thing as well. And they come together and, you know, sparks fly because it's a YA romance. Of course it's gonna happen. I did not like Prue which is most people's complaint. She was uh, way over the top, but she does progress throughout the book, which is the point of a book. Your main character is supposed to evolve and progress and become a better person. And I do feel like she did that in some ways. Um, I know from my friend Brianna that a lot of the depictions of the ways that the sea life was treated at the shelter is not necessarily accurate. Um, Brianna has spent a lot of time working with animals in these kinds of shelters and so I trust her judgment on that more than I would trust my own. So like I know that like that aspect of it isn't necessarily as true to life as it could be. I didn't really understand like the magic part of it. It was there was a lot of things with this that I just didn't love. Um, I didn't hate it by any means just wasn't my favorite. We then have Star Daughter by Shweta Takrar. This book follows Sheetal who has known her whole life that she was born half star. Her mother was a star, her father was a human, and she has lived her life trying to hide that fact. And when she is in her late teens, she actually accidentally injures her father and she knows that the only thing that can heal him is an actual star. So she goes to the heavens to try to convince her mother to come and save her father and inadvertently ends up having to become her mother's champion in this battle going on for the basically the safety of all of the universe essentially. I give this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Here's my thing with this book. I loved the character work. I loved the just the world building was so fantastic. I love the work that Shweta really put into this. Like there was so many, so many good things about the world and the histories and the lore and the mythos and all of that was just so well done. The family, the dynamics, all of that. So amazing. I really didn't enjoy the plot. I felt like the pacing was really off and the plot was just not as much as it could be. Um, again, I enjoyed it. I think it was a really good book. I didn't love it. It wasn't my favorite, but I loved 
the world building. So I think if you are a person who really enjoys um, a different kind of world building other than, you know, European world building, I think this will be a good book for you to pick up. I will definitely be reading more from her in the future. I then read Kisses and Croissants by Anna Sophia Jovano, and I also gave that a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This book follows our main character who goes to a French ballet school on summer break. Um, she's trying to get an audition to work in the New York ballet, something of that sort. I don't know ballet terms. Anyway, she has lived her whole life surrounded by ballet. It has been everything. She eats, breathes, sleeps ballet and she believes that one of her great grandmothers was a ballerina that had been painted by Degas. I'm trying to remember this off the top of my head here. When she gets to France and gets to the school she not only has to deal with her arch enemy from school back in New York showing up at this French school but she also meets a boy and has to figure out what is more important to her. I thought that like the French immersiveness of it I think was really good. I think um, I, I can't speak on the ballet aspect of it because I don't really know the ballet world as far as like the stereotypical ballet world that we get from movies and TVs and books and all of that thing. It was accurate to that portrayal but I don't know what the ballet world is actually like. Uh, have you seen me? Not doing much ballet in my spare time. I liked the characters and I liked the some of the side plots as far as like trying to figure out if her great-grandmother was actually painted by Degas and um, deciding you know what is more important like the ballet or the boy and I, I enjoyed some of those aspects of it. I enjoyed uh, like her making friends with specific people. I really struggle with like the third act plot twist. It is the dumbest it's the dumbest plot twist and it's one that you see every time. I've I've probably read, I don't know, in the past five years I've probably read five books with ballet dancers that have this exact same plot twist and it's just it's so overdone and I can't, it really took me out of the story and made me enjoy it much less. So um, I think there were other plot twists that could have happened that could have made the book a five star or even a four and a half star. Um, but I did really enjoy it. I will definitely pick up more from this author again in the future. And I enjoyed being in France for a little while. We then have Isn't It Romantic by Lissa K. Adams. I gave this a 3.75 out of 5 stars. This is the fourth book in the Romance Book Club series. This one follows the Russian and his wife Elena. Um, they are married at the beginning of the book. Um, so throughout this series some couples you get are already together and so it's like a second chance for that couple and some couples are newly forming. So it's just a little bit of different things here and there. The series follows these men in like higher society. Some are like politicians, some are athletes, some are um, musicians, some are like big business owners. They're these men who come together and have this book club where they read romance novels which they call manuals to help them with their love lives and the issues that they're having with the women in their lives. And so this book as I said follows the Russian and his wife Elena who have a marriage of convenience. Uh, the Russian is Russian surprisingly and his childhood friend Elena she needed to get out of Russia and so they get married so that she can come to the U.S. for safety reasons and they don't really have a marriage and even though he's clearly in love with her. This one in particular was much slower moving than our previous three books. It's not as steamy. It's a lot more um, sweet and gentle and definitely more definitely has that feeling of two people who are afraid of ruining any of their history with what they might do in the present day. Um, there's a lot of things going on with the couple in that aspect of it. There's some weird things going on in the side plot and that's kind of where I was not a huge fan. But as far as this couple themselves, I had a really good time reading their relationship and it felt very real to me. Um, there are a lot of people who this was like their least favorite. There are a lot of people who DNF'd this one. Um, I really enjoyed it. 
Oh, we then have Winter Counts by David Heska Wombly Waden, and this was again one of the picks from the Avengers and Ship Reading Challenge hosts favorites and I will have more about that coming up in uh, a later video but it was Michelle's favorite uh, Michelle from Thor wants another letter uh, Winter Counts follows a man who lives on a reservation who is kind of like the hired muscle of the reservation like if you want to get revenge on somebody for something shitty that they did you can hire him to take out his revenge your revenge actually yes the book really does deal with a lot of the bullshit that native americans have to deal with living on these reservations and things like you know the government not really doing all they could to help these people and you know giving them the worst pieces of land and not giving them the help that they need historically or now um after decimating them it's there's a lot of things there's a lot of things um they talk about a lot about um how the communities are poor they don't have like the health and nutrition or the education that they really should have and a lot of that is because of the way that the government regulates things that they are allowed to have and things they're allowed to do um so it deals a lot with that but it also deals with like a drug dealer who's bringing drugs in to the reservation and some other things and there's like a romance and there's like a found family aspect of it um i give this a 3.75 out of five stars i did really enjoy it um for me it is very much a more of like a character driven story which we know i prefer a plot driven story um and there was a lot of character driven things this month and so like by the time i got to this one i was just kind of like okay um had I read it in another month I might have either enjoyed it more or enjoyed it less depending on you know how how I how I went that month uh, but I did really enjoy it I do highly recommend it I think it is a beautiful piece of work I think that um seeing that perspective from someone who has actually lived that experience so well done I just really enjoyed it speaking of enjoying things that are outside of my experience uh, Casadora by Romina Garber. I gave this a four out of five stars. It was the sequel to Lovizona, which I read last year. I haven't, I've had an arc of both of them. Uh, Casadora is, like I guess, the sequel to Lobizona. Lobizona follows Manu, who is what we'll call an illegal immigrant into the United States. And her and her mother are running from her father's family, who she has been told her whole life is like a mafia were part of the drug cartel in where are they from my brain is so out right now i don't even remember she has been told that her father's family um killed her father and she and her mother had to run when she was a baby and they've kind of taken up residence with this older lady who is like a surrogate grandmother to her she doesn't really know that they're illegal she kind of finds this out throughout the course of the beginning of the first book and then she finds out that she is a werewolf and so the books books revolve around that uh one of my favorite things about the series is the effortless and beautiful integration of the spanish language into this book which makes sense because our main character is a spanish-speaking character i have read reviews by people who are like very put off by it which i think is like the dumbest thing ever because a you can understand what's going on based off of the context alone but also typically if there's like a big spanish chunk then it will be relayed in english maybe not word for word but enough from the context that you know what's happening um as someone who took four years of spanish in high school my spanish is not great but i love reading this kind of integration and like hearing words that i recognize and being able to like string things together and then being told from the context of the rest of the narrative like i had that pretty close all right i did okay it makes it so much more real and immersive to actually have the character speaking the language that they would actually normally be speaking and um, even though it's in english for those of us who only speak one language i thought this was a duology i was wrong and the ending of the second book was so well done like the plot twist and just I am so concerned 
about how things are going to go in the third book and I am here for it. We then have Witch Volume 7. This is uh, Part 3, A Crisis on Both Worlds Volume 1. Yes, it is both Volume 1 and Volume 7 because that's how these things were titled and it's weird. Um, I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed it. I love the series. I love the artwork in these. They're a lot of fun. They're witchy and they make me happy and that's all you need to know. We then have Bookish and the Beast by Ashley Poston which I gave a 4.75 out of 5 stars which may be a little high if I'm being honest but I had a great time. This is the third book in the Geekerella series. So the weird part is like in Geekerella and the princess and the fangirl. It took me a minute. Um, like my favorite parts of those are when they're at the convention, like when they're at the Starfield convention and you're like have all of that going on. You don't even, I mean you do see the Starfield convention in this book but it's minuscule in comparison to like all the other things that are happening. Um, it's like a flashback scene. It's not even a present day scene. Most of the present day scene takes place in a small town in America in a library. Well, a personal library. Either way. I had a really great time reading this book. I don't know what it was about it that I just adored, but I did. And finally we have The Nature of Witches by Rachel Griffin and I gave this a 4.75 out of 5 stars. This was the AuthorTube chat book club pick for July and August so I will link our discussion video in the description box down below if you want to see me and Kate discuss this book. I liked it a lot more than Kate did which it happens because uh, I don't think Kate fin Kate didn't finish it. No, Kate did not finish it. I DNF'd the book prior and then Kate DNF'd this one. Uh, and that's how we live our lives now. So this book follows Clara who lives in a world where you are, witches are born on the equinox and whatever equinox you're born on is what your magic centers around. And each specific magic is better at a different thing. And in this world, the witches are the ones who kind of help control the ecosystem. They kind of take care of uh, fixing all the things that the humans fuck up with, you know, global warming. And Clara was born an Everwitch, which basically means she has the powers of all the seasons. And when the equinox hit, her personality shifts, her powers shift, everything just kind of like changes overnight for her, like the second that the equinox hits. And so she is being trained to be like this massive power force for their community because they need someone with her kind of powers. And she is assigned this specific person to help her with her powers. And there's like enemies, and battles, and fights, and it was just so good. I love the romance in this. And I think one of the things that really, really was just one of the most beautiful, haunting, painful things that I have ever read in a book. There is a part where because she's trying to keep the love interest safe, um, she basically breaks up with him. She um, is trying to stay away from him completely because she knows that her powers are dangerous especially for him. Because oh yeah did I mention that when her powers go haywire as they are occasionally known to do they kill the people that are closest to her. Not physically closest but emotionally closest to her. Like her parents and her best friend who are all dead. Okay I forgot that part. There's a clearing in the woods where their magic sparked and they grew this tree and he goes there and he you know is tending this tree all the time when they break up they kind of start using um like floral messages as i'm sure like everybody's heard like you know you give like this specific kind of flower for this thing and this flower for this thing and all of the flowers in their world have a meaning and they start communicating through the flowers that they're planting and because they're both feeling all of these massive feelings about each other and about the betrayal and about being so disappointed in the other person, him being disappointed in her, namely, um, for not wanting to be with him because she's afraid for him. The entire clearing is just full of flowers and it is 
it was so beautifully done and I just that part is probably why I rated this so high it probably is more realistically like a 4.5 or a 4.25 but I just loved this book it was fantastic I highly recommend it physically these are just a couple of the books I read this month but the wrap up was all of the books I read this month. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns about any of the books that we discussed, please hit me up in the comment section down below. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos a couple of times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!